Hello and welcome to the MKG Podcast. I'm your host, Carrie Gard. This podcast helps demand gen marketers grow their company's business through the right means, messaging, media, and measurements. At MKG, we hire experts. And to help me introduce today's guest, I have our special guest, co-host, CEO, Mike Kraft. Mike, thanks for joining me again. Round two. Very exciting. Thanks for having me back. I was worried that I wasn't going to get invited. Well, you know, just trying to give everybody a fair share. Fair share. No, I'm I'm super excited to have you on this one because you actually know our guest, John Bellamy from Australia. I do, yes. I met John, uh, if I recall, it was September of 2018. So as of the published date for this episode, it's probably a year, year and a half uh, since I first met John. And uh, we actually met him at a uh, consultant's office who we we hired to help us out, uh, Sixth Division uh, in Phoenix, Arizona, to help us out some of our marketing and sales automation. And John was there uh, as well as one of their clients. And that's where we really clicked and hit it off. Yes, indeed. And uh, we we learned about what John does back then, but reconnecting with him on this podcast sort of saw our wheels turning a little bit. Yeah, LinkedIn is sort of a hard nut to crack. Yeah, we've definitely tried uh, for ourselves, you know, for our own agency, to use LinkedIn mostly on the on the paid advertising side of LinkedIn. And uh, I would say that our account directors and our digital ad experts here uh, from the leadership at our clients at least once a year. And it's a it's a common uh, statement. It's said in different ways, but what they're really asking is, you can't be serious. LinkedIn has all its targeting capabilities for paid ads, like. This this has to kill it for us, like right? Like you can't be serious when you say we're going to leave it off our media plan for the next calendar year. But we are because due to things like the high auction prices um, and the limited inventory that you can get on LinkedIn without enabling the audience expansion uh, option for targeting. Uh, frankly, it's tough to make those numbers work when you're paying ten, fifteen, twenty dollars a click um, for a not very granular audience, and those audiences become much more expensive. Uh, as you get more specific, so you can pay 20, 25, 30 bucks a click. And, and that just is really tough to pilot um, when you compare that to a platform like Twitter or Facebook ads, where you could run a pilot program for 2,500 bucks and get some good clicks. You might get some expensive 10, $15 clicks on both of those platforms, but you're also going to get a healthy mix of two, three, four dollar qualified clicks and traffic to your site. So it, it just, the barrier to entry with LinkedIn has been really high. And we haven't, on the paid side, really cracked the code on how much we should be spending and why and where and what kind of offers we should be promoting for our customers. So we've we've really struggled with it over the years. And we keep coming back to it. We keep thinking it's going to change. And it, it just hasn't changed yet. Well, John has an interesting solution to this where they, and he's going to talk more about this, where they actually use the messaging platform and we did we did do a little bit of this for ourselves when we were trying to do cold email and cold calling and we mixed in a little bit of cold messaging via LinkedIn, but it didn't it still didn't work for us and and why do you think that is? You know, I I have a couple hypotheses. Uh, and for context for our listeners, uh, before I get into my hypotheses, number one, we hired over the course of about seven months two different vendors that specialize in using LinkedIn, making connection requests, building relationships, and trying to uh, get engagements going. By engagements, I mean somebody could connect with you and they could just say, hey, great to connect. That sounds awesome. You know, glad you're in my network. And engagement could also be something more serious where that that person says, oh, so glad that you connected with me. We're actually looking for a vendor or a partner or a referral just like you. So you couldn't have connected at a better time. We should talk about doing business with one another. So we paid, like I said, we, we paid two very talented uh, companies over the course of seven months to lead those engagements uh, for us and, and build relationships. And frankly, I, I think we saw a couple of problems. Um, and that's where my hypotheses come in. My first hypothesis, hypothesis, singular, is, you know, we weren't really doing anything organically on LinkedIn. So we weren't publishing a lot of content. We weren't 
didn't have a podcast or a video series or a blog that we were promoting or a regular blog cadence on our own website. So it was a little bit like, uh, you know, you loaded a shotgun shell into your shotgun, but there was this weird mix of shots. It wasn't really consistent. Um, you would fire every once in a while, but there wasn't this strategy that said, hey, we are active on LinkedIn. So people would see the request and they'd look at me uh, and it was my name that these uh, companies were managing, my account. They'd look at me and they'd be like, eh, he kind of posts every once in a while on LinkedIn. Then they go to our company page and be like, these guys almost never post on LinkedIn. So this is a very odd thing. That they're now trying to build a relationship with me on a platform they're not really popular on. So I think that was the first problem. Uh, the second problem that I hinted at in my other hypothesis is we just didn't have enough content. Mm -hmm. We needed a lot more content and a steady stream of it so that when people did engage with us and, and that engagement, again, could just be saying hello, could be asking a question, could be responding to one of our questions, we could actually back it up and they say, oh, you know, I'm really interested in attribution for online travel companies. Um, hey, we've got this this 4Ms podcast and one of them is one of the M's is measurement. We've got whole episodes with experts on marketing measurement and analytics that we could totally just share with you and uh, build a relationship in terms of that common interest. And we didn't have enough content to back that up. And that's where we really got ourselves kind of in trouble because it just looked like we were kind of uh, asleep at the wheel while still trying to build relationships there. It's a very odd. And that's really the difference between LinkedIn versus some of these other social channels, right? Like with Facebook and Twitter, yeah, engagement's important and you definitely want to have like a Facebook page and a Twitter profile and you want to be posting on those if you can, but I mean, you can spin up campaigns to those no problem and be driving to your website. And you can do that with LinkedIn, but LinkedIn is, is because you're targeting so much more refined, you're building, especially with what John does from a, from a direct messaging standpoint and what we've tried with these other companies, you're building a relationship there. You're not just showing them an ad and saying, hi, bye. You're saying, hey, let's connect. Let's talk more. And then when they go to do their research, they're like, well, why should I care? Because I'm not sure that you do. So there's definitely this difference on in, in terms of how you treat each social network. And LinkedIn really comes down to that engagement piece and putting the work in. You're definitely hearing me right. Uh, and it comes down to something that you and I have talked about for years, which is the relationship between paid and organic on a social media channel or on a search engine. And there's tons of research talking about search engine marketing, tons of search marketing research that exists in the world uh, from really smart folks like SEM Rush, um, you know, Ahrefs, uh, and other sources of, of really reputable search research that showed your paid click-through rate will increase when you have a top three and especially a position one organic ranking. The same thing happens with organic too. You know, your, your organic uh, click-through rate can increase and your impressions can increase by having a paid presence. It's not a direct cause and effect, but there's a correlation that quite a few researchers have uncovered and uh, especially when it comes to branded search. So there's really no reason not to apply that same principle to a place like LinkedIn and bring it over there from a, a social media standpoint. And John actually starts our whole conversation off this way around the importance of doing the work up front around your LinkedIn profile, uh, as well as having that content ready available. So let's jump in and hear from John from Direct Messaging on how to start a conversation and engagement with potential leads and how he created Link, how he helped LinkedIn actually become a useful and powerful business development tool. Check it out. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the MKG podcast. Today, I have with me John Bellamy from Australia. This is so cool, John, that we are talking halfway around the world from each other in real time. I love it. I love it. How are you, Kerry? Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Um, You're going to have to put up with this Australian twangy accent, you know, like, so I hope it's okay. <laughs> oh, it's great. No, I love it. I, I married a Brit, so, you know, I, I'm good with the accent, so this is great. Thanks for joining me. So glad to have you. I am excited for this today. LinkedIn, it is my my passion to talk about, so yes, let's go. Tell me. I want to know. I want to know. How did you stumble on, maybe you didn't stumble, 
but how did you crack the code on LinkedIn being a great channel for marketers to land new leads? Yeah, cool. So, I mean, long story short, like probably everybody, you started getting these messages in your inbox saying, connect with me on LinkedIn. And I ignored it for months. And then I was like, hold on a second. I was a rep in corporate at that time. And I was like, hold on a second. What is this thing? I better go check it out. And then pretty darn quickly, I went, wow, this is a really good way for me as a sales rep to digitize my connections, to digitize my business cards, because I went, I probably won't be at this organization for forever. And I actually wanted to go and start my own business. Um, So that's what happened originally. So I just started digitizing business cards. And then I went, hmm, no one's really talking about, you know, how to make money from LinkedIn. And I'm like, there's all these business people out there. And let's be honest, we all have problems and challenges that we need solved. Um, so I, I just started reaching out to people on LinkedIn, like I would have a normal conversation offline. I started transitioning that online and, uh, lo and behold, people started coming back to me and saying, let's have a chat. And we started making money. And then, uh, down the traps, all of a sudden, as, as they do, people go, Hey, John, you know how that happened? Can you show me how you just did that? And that's how we got started. Started with online programs. We do done for you and, you know, all of that stuff. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's one of those things. And the, the big thing that I love about it is so many people bag out LinkedIn, okay? So if the masses are bagging out something, it means that it must be amazing. Um, so I always do the opposite. So that's why I go there. Everyone goes, Facebook, Facebook. I'm like, it's great. But, you know, I like LinkedIn better. See, yeah. we love LinkedIn too. We yeah. love LinkedIn too. And it, what's crazy about it is you have all these contacts at your fingertips. And you have all of their information of who they're working for and all these companies is exactly who you want, but it's so hard. I mean, we have found it hard with our clients in cracking the code on, on how to make it cost effective. Right. So a lot of times we're doing paid uh, search, which is intent is huge intent to be pretty high on LinkedIn too, but, but in running ads, it just doesn't seem to be as cost effective, but you seem to be doing something very different yeah. and right. Yeah, we're, we're found, like we're found with it, um, the cost effectiveness. Now, I know you guys are on top of this because you guys are solid in your business and all of that. But unfortunately, most businesses out there and unfortunately, even corporates, a lot of the time you'll speak to marketing specialists or even heads of marketing and they don't even know what their cost of acquisition is. They don't know what their long-term client value is. And it's, it's actually shocking. And it's not, I'm not talking about businesses that might be doing, you know, 300 grand or 5 million, like there's businesses doing 20, 50, a hundred million that still don't know that stuff. Um, and you know, they're being fed. You've just got to do branding, um, which, you know, is another tactic, but Hey, I'm a direct response guy. Uh, so, um, so that's what it is. But so when it, when it comes to LinkedIn for me, like there's sort of, there's two, there's two big distinct ways that you can use it. You can, you can drive outbound messaging strategies and we can talk about that, or then you've got the paid advertising strategies. Um, What we've found is you're absolutely correct. Cost per click is typically a lot higher on LinkedIn than, say, Facebook or even possibly Google Ads, depending on what your search is. But what we've found is if you're driving to, like, phone conversation or, you know, even digital asset, even though it may cost you a little bit higher to get somebody to opt in to receive that message, we found across most of our clients that the conversion rate, the cost of actual conversion is lower than the other platforms because they're more in tune or, you know, there's some, some psychological benefit that they're actually in business. We have that problem there. So um, it's an interesting beast. And uh, even on the ads platform, not all the ads are amazing. You know, that's like the image ads themselves. I don't think that they're that great. The text ads, I don't think that, that they're gra- that great. Uh, for me, it's all about sponsored emails. It's that messaging side, sponsored emails. Videos are okay from a branding perspective, um, but if you're doing images, carousel ads seem to be performing a lot better than just the standard image ad. But it's really getting into their inbox is really where you guys thrive. Right? Uh, yeah, that's that's what we love. Like we we really sit there and and work on h- how do I get how do I get it's essentially a four step process. It's like how do we reach out and connect with somebody. Okay, so that might be via the inbox, via an ad, whatever it might be. Uh, then how do we communicate with them? So how do, we get a, how do we get them to engage in that marketing piece so that we can have a sales conversation? On that sales conversation, it's all about turning the conversation into cash. So how do we convert? And then finally, how do we go and cultivate those relationships? 
um, on the back end and, and you know, really de- that's where you're driving referrals, repeat business, you know, repeat buying purchases and all of that type of thing. And so we call it the C4 method and, like, personally, and this is I could be completely wrong, but it doesn't for me it doesn't matter if it's direct mail, it doesn't matter if it's digital on Facebook, on LinkedIn or Google, it's the same process. It's how do we get, how do we get someone's attention, have a conversation and help them to buy? Profitably. Absolutely. Yeah. Profitably. <laughs> yeah. Well, the most cost-effective way, right? So yeah. yeah. It's like you're saying, if you're doing branding, generally, that's very top of the funnel. That's generally going to be may- way more cost-effective because you got to really work that lead from a much higher standpoint. I'm in the bucket with you from a lead gen standpoint, yeah. demand gen standpoint of, I want people already looking for this solution or yeah. knowing that they have a specific problem and they didn't even know the solution existed and sort of marrying those two things together driving them to an asset, getting the conversation started. So, yes. So how do you, so with LinkedIn messaging, Mm -hmm. uh, how do you scale that? Because trying to go in on an individual level and say, okay, I want to talk to this person and then pulling up their inbox and then sending them a direct message, you know, so I know that there's tools out there, but how do you guys specifically sort of solve for that scaling? Yeah. Yeah. So I think what what we're talking about here is like um, specifically the grunt work. Um, and, and the reason I call it that is like, I don't know what it's like in the States, but if you've got a, if you've got a high end sales rep, they're probably getting paid somewhere between, I don't know, 70 and $150,000 as a base possibly. And then bonuses and commissions and things on, on top of that. So you've got this valuable resource that as a company, you're investing a lot of money in for them to be performing. And my opinion, I believe in sales process engineering formula. So that, that person, that rep, the only thing that they should be doing is sitting in front of people or, or on the phone or on Zoom like this, closing deals, discovery, close deal, discovery, close deal, discovery, close deal. So the challenge is a lot of businesses still have that person doing the 360 of all the lead gen and all of that type of stuff. And, it, and in my opinion, like I said, my opinion, I, I think that's completely wrong. I think it's a waste of their resources. So what we look at from that grunt work perspective, specifically what we're talking about is um, how do we identify number one? How do we identify who those prospects are? Where are they hanging out on LinkedIn? Are they even there? What's their responsiveness? Are they using the platform? So we use things like Sales Navigator on, on LinkedIn for that aspect. Um, then, then we come down to a foundation of the profile um, of that individual's profile, profile because you're driving through the rep's profile. Is their profile even structured and clearly articulates in a way that it's going to actually you know, produce a sales conversation? Fact is, most people's aren't. So we've got to look at, you know, their headline, their background summary. Is their profile even linked to the company page? Does the company page even have any copy on it? Um, you know, all of these foundational things that people just overlook. So we've got to get those couple of things sorted first. And then what, you, what, what I believe you need to do as a company is you need to either invest in the resources that do this next step or partner with somebody like us or somebody else out there that can help you. Um, and, and essentially what we look at is once the profile's written, the save searches in Sales Navigator are sorted, we actually go and do the grunt work. So we will go and typically send somewhere between 150 and 300 connection requests a week, okay, um, on each client that we're looking at. Now, depending on, you know, depending on the client base, we might only need to send 50 um, because they're more, you know, high in-depth messages. But for the most part, it's like three to 150 to 300 connection requests a week. Um, now before so, you even get into their inbox, the first thing you want to do is actually connect with them. And yeah. that to get around, not get around, but essentially if you wanted to direct e- email so, somebody so, on LinkedIn, you have to pay for it, right? Well, yeah. So what we're talking about here, there's, there's, there's the paid ad strategy, which I'll talk about in a moment. And then this is like the grunt work, the, the, the manual reaching out strategy. Okay. So more of the, okay. more of the slow. So I should distinguish that there. So let's talk about the messaging strategy there for a moment. So you need sales navigator, um, you know, depending on the size of the team, you might go and get a team edition, but it's usually, a, you know, a hundred dollars or something like that. Per, per team member a month. But what that's going to give you is the ability to really, similar to like the paid ads um, demographics and the search that you can do there, Sales Navigator is going to enable you to really hone in on who you want. So account-based marketing or even just like more of a lead search from that aspect. Um, and then from the messaging strategy, what can happen is 
somebody like us or, or, or your resource on the team can start sending those connection requests on behalf of the sales rep. Okay, so we've got a we've got a structured personalized message template um, that we send to them. So it, let's just say for you know ease of math, we send a hundred a week. Okay, ease of math, send a hundred a week, and we get a thirty percent response rate or acceptance rate. So now we've got thirty people um, that uh, you know we're now connected with that we can put in a follow up process. So what we would then look at is a follow up process consisting of three to five messages that are really designed to, um, you know, essentially indoctrinate that new prospect into who you are as the individual, what the organisation does and how you can help. And the intention behind that is that we get some type of engagement that they want to, that, you know, that they're open to receiving a free resource, that they're open to having a phone conversation, want to listen to a podcast, watch a video, whatever that might be from that aspect. Um, and then it's just a matter of that, that rep then following up those conversations. So once they're a lead, once they accept whatever it is the give is, then yeah. that's when your salesperson. Correct. Steps yeah. In. Correct. Yeah. So it's about, it's sort of like kickstarting the conversation. It's like um, a lot of people will understand like a market response rep or a sales, a sales development rep. That's the type of role that you're looking at there, but it's even sort of before then, it's sort of like that lead development, that campaign development side where you can have, um, you know, a, a resource that can just do the do the grunt work, do that legwork of, of connecting with people. You might have met at a conference or whatever it might be, just starting to do all of that grunt work, sort of like the $10 an hour task of, of right. getting you involved. And then then once the conversation is happening, bring them across to that market or sales, sales development person where they can qualify and then, or, you know, or go straight to the salesperson that they can go and do their presentations from that aspect. So, so that's sort of, that, that's the outreach side of things. It's the, right. the dumb and boring grunt work. Yeah. yeah. And sales navigator seems to do a lot of that for you in the sense of at least automating, right? Cause hi, my big question in all of this was yeah. like, well, if you're doing these direct, the connection part I get, that's pretty scalable, but the yeah. actual outreach of reaching out to the people on a one-on-one basis and starting a conversation. It's labor intensive. It's labor intensive. Yeah, it's labor intensive. There are automation platforms out there that uh, are trying to assist. Um, A lot of them are in breach of LinkedIn's terms of service. So do what it, if you want, use them, don't use them. We, We personally believe in manually processing. So our team, for example, we manually, we keep everything in a spreadsheet. Um, from that initial stage. So everybody that we connect with, who accepts, great. Now, those people who have accepted, we've got to go and send them, you know, thank you message. Great. Now, a week later, we've got to send all of those people, uh, you know, follow up one, then maybe 15 days later, follow up two, then 10 days after that, follow up three. Um, So we manually go and do that. Right, it's almost like an email platform, but on a manual sort of process. Correct. Really yeah. Cool out there to yeah. automate it for you just yet. Yeah, because everyone just everyone's sick and tired of just getting spammed through the platform. Yeah. And even though we're templating messages, but we're manually triggering them. And the beautiful thing about that is, the minute that somebody responds to a message, we can pull them out of the campaign so that they don't get any further communication from that LinkedIn messaging sequence. And then you know we transition that to the to the salesperson. Um, from that aspect to go and follow up. So that's really the key of it, but it's 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 the grunt work. Like you, you cannot, you know, and once again, in my opinion, you cannot have a resource as a company that, you, that you're investing $100,000 a year for sending, or, you know, clicking the blue connect button and sending a follow-up message. It's just not worth their time. Like well, it would I, be, yeah, that was my big yeah. question in all of this. Like yeah. this, this sounds great. I mean, the more personalized the experience is, yeah, the better handle you're going to have on actually creating a real connection with that person and potentially moving them through your funnel and solving a problem yeah. for them. But how do you scale that? Which, and to your point, it's 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 still a manual process. It's just getting the yeah. right team in there who have the right processes in place to basically do it for you. Correct. In yeah. A somewhat cost effective way. Yeah. Well, I mean, imagine this: like, if you are like we we always when we're working, we're working with clients, we're always looking for how can we get somewhere between sort of eight to twenty positive engagements a month that can lead to a conversation, um, like a phone call, meeting, whatever that might be. So, if you look at it, like, oh, there's always a cost to anything, sure, resources, yeah. and all of that. But if you look at it from the point, if I can remove that type of pressure from the sales team. And, and and all we do is when we invest in that resource that can generate an extra, even if it's just 10 appointments additional a month, 
what's your conversion rate? You know, what's that look like? If you're yeah, if you're getting in front of now. yeah yeah yeah, I mean that's a, that's an extra 120 meetings per annum that that salesperson that rep can you know be in front of. What's that going to equate to? 30 grand, 50 grand, 100 grand, a million bucks worth of business? I don't know. Like it's, you know, everybody's going to be different. But that's the that's the process. But if all it did was enable a sales rep to close, you know, in most cases, in most businesses we speak to, if all it did was enable a sales rep to close in its first year one additional deal a quarter um, from a platform, that's a huge benefit when you bring in, for a lot of people, when you bring in long-term client value. Now, like I said, everyone's price points are going to be different. So some people might be, that's nothing, John. Um, but, you know, I know you work with some clients that they've probably got a, a sales cycle that's somewhere between 18 months and three years, um, you know, to some to some extent. Not ideally, um, but sometimes. Yeah, yeah but, yeah. you know, yeah, but the I've had a few of those. Right. You're closing, yeah. When you're closing these deals, though, you're not, this isn't a SaaS product that, uh, you know, yeah, 10, not selling a $10 widget. You know? yeah. yeah, you know, or on a monthly <laughs> subscription, you're selling something yeah. that's, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year yeah. that yeah. takes time. No. So this, this makes a ton of sense for those types of clients. Yeah. Like that. So that's resources. That's great. Once you have the resources sort of situated and you know how you're going to do this thing, whether it's working with you, whether it's doing it internally, yeah, more power to you. The, the, the next piece that you really need to actually make this work is what you sort of alluded to earlier is that messaging piece, you know, what's yeah. that hook? What's that thing that's going to get them to engage with you? And so how yeah. do you, do you create the assets? Do you have somebody else create them for you when you're working with a client? Do they provide yeah. them? Do they work with a creative agency? What sort of, what have you mm-hmm. seen that works? when yeah, getting so, so what, what we've found that works is the process. Um, so we, we follow a fairly structured process and, and then we work with the client to, to get them to go and create the assets. If they don't have the assets, um, we initially will go, okay, well, what do you have? Um, and then we'll start with that and then, but we'll get them to build. But typically, so if we, if we talk about um, the grunt work, if we talk about five messages over a period of, say, 45 to 60 days, that's, that's the typical process that we'll go with as a very base starting point for any client that we work with. Um, so as part of that, it's a connection message. We don't need any assets for a connection message. It's text. Um, then, then we send a thank you message. So where most people go wrong is they go straight in for the kill with the sales process. Ah. Uh, let's, actually, let's actually send a thank you message. Hey, it's great to connect with you, blah, blah, blah. And what we're finding that works really well right now is putting a video in that thank you message. So imagine this, you've connected with me on LinkedIn and then all of a sudden you get a message back from me and it's like, you know, uh, hey, Carrie, it's John here. Listen, fantastic to connect with you. Thanks so much for accepting the request. Um, listen, I'm not sure about you, but, um, you know, I love this LinkedIn platform. In fact, I use it every day. Anyway, I put this quick video together that shares a little bit more about me and why I love what I'm doing and, you know, hopefully we can, you might get some value out of it, you know, whatever it might be, a bit of copy. Link them to a video or a landing page or something like that. And it's a video of John sitting there going, hey, how's it going? Great again. You know, it won't be personalized to you on the video, but it'll be like, uh, great to connect on LinkedIn. You know, this is what I love. This is why I do what I do. This is why I love what I'm doing. This is what we do as a company. By the way, I've got this white paper or this asset, or if you want to have a chat, blah, 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 simply enter your details over here and let's, let's start the sales conversation. And you know what? That's actually really interesting because when I talked to Brad a few weeks ago, mm-hmm. um, who we actually met at Six Division, yeah. funny enough, yeah. Great guy. Uh, yeah. almost a year ago. Uh, but it's similar, right? Like when you sign up for Six Division, the first thing they do is send you that personalized video, right? Yeah. How far does that, I mean, after experiencing that, how far yeah. does that go? Right? Yeah, I mean, they, they, go, they go for full tour of the office and everything, which is, which is awesome. So it's, it's, it's bringing that sort of personalization. And the great thing here from a, from a company perspective is you're actually – it's sort of got multiple benefits. Not only is it designed to help get from a lead gen perspective, but it also helps from an employer brand perspective because if you're investing and encouraging your team to record a video to be the face of your company, this is where the personal and the corporate brand really realigns from that aspect. And, and it's non-salesy. It's, it's conversational. It's like, hey, this is who I am. Great to connect. Listen, if this is of interest or if you've got these problems and challenges, you might like this resource. Go check it out. 
Um, so you've got the thank you message there, which is simple. You know, simple, yeah, it's simple. so low hanging fruit, right? Anybody can go yeah. create a video. We're doing it right now, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just <laughs> pick up an <laughs> iPhone, record. Yeah. Uh, so, so that's so that's the cool piece. Then message three. This is where message three and four. Um, really come into it maybe there's an article that you've got like a really kick-ass blog post that does really well or it might be another digital asset a video or something along those things and it's relevant to that audience okay um, and you might be able to segment down your audience so that like we're working with a client at the moment where we're, we're sending a specific excuse me type of message to mining companies and a different message to lawyers and a different message to medical specialists Mm -hmm. So you tailor that message. It's actually the same asset that we're using, but mm -hmm. it's a tailored message to that audience. Um, so that's message three. Hey, do you want it? I've got this thing. Do you want it? Message four, it might be, hey, I, you know, um, I shared an article with you a couple of weeks ago. I'm curious. What did you think? You know, because we and want them to engage. A hundred percent. Really? 100%. Okay, I read 100%. it. This was great. I yeah, I love this, blah, blah, blah. I didn't like this. Like, so my thank you message on LinkedIn right now, we get like upwards of 30, 40 responses a week. And my thank you message is something as simple as, um, you know, Kerry, great to connect with you on LinkedIn. I'm curious, based on my profile and skill set, how do you think we can get the most value out of our newfound connection? People come back to you and you get the smart asses that will go, I don't know, John, you tell me. And then you and then you'll get people that don't respond. But you actually, like people who actually invest the time to respond, actually go, hey, John, well, you know, thanks for that because it reminded me to go back and check out your profile. Um, and what I found from that was, oh, I can see that you specialize in LinkedIn. Um, I'm really struggling to get any traction from it. Do you think, you know, do you have any free resources or can we jump on the phone? Um, or, you know, is there anything that you can share with me that might be able to help me? The amount of people that come back positively like that, it's, it's just, you're never short of leads. But it's doing, it in a, it's doing it in a way that isn't over the top salesy. And I actually, the reason why I, why I use that message personally is because I want people to check out my profile. Like it clearly says, based on my profile and skill set, how do you think I can help? And like, they do. And they go check out your profile. They, they check it and out. And they respond to you. That's, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. And it's that personal, what's so different from about this than anything else outside of it is, is emails certainly an aspect of that, but you don't really get to have that one-on-one -on -one conversation with a lead right out of the yeah. gate, right? This is really yeah. the only way you can do it. Sure, you could do a Facebook post and you could, um, you know, up it so that more people see it and people certainly comment and, and that's an avenue, but yeah. normally people are commenting on Facebook because they just want yeah. to hear, not necessarily because they want to hear from you. This is so... This is and it's, so it's an, and it's, empowering, it's empowering that connection between the rep you know or that member of the team and the client as well it's really bridging that gap um because a lot of people you know like the the big thing i don't know in the states but the big thing here it's like the faceless corporations oh they're just a big business they don't they don't, they don't want to know about me the only time they call me is if they want money from me or um whereas if we're empowering that connection between the rep and 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 your end client the prospects and, and your clients it's it's a great thing from there and that usually our fifth message is usually a straight to the point. Hey, you know, hey, Kerry, we've been working with businesses like you and, you know, we've been helping them achieve this result. Um, in fact, in the last 12 months, we did X, Y, Z. You know, here's what some of our clients say, testimonial, testimonial, testimonial. That said, if you got, you know, would you be open to having a chat about a demo, you know, whatever it might be. Um, the call I mean, to action from that aspect. Yeah, it's just like, let, let's have a conversation. And, we're, and as we all, we're not looking for thousands of people to respond we're right. looking for the right people to respond. You're going after uh, whales. You want to yeah. land the yeah. whales. And what better way to do it than knowing exactly what companies yeah. are coming in and knowing exactly who you want to go after. I mean, it feels yeah, like a greener. It's just... It's a beautiful thing. I mean, I love it. So that's why I love the messaging side of things. And then if you talk about the paid ad strategy, um, a similar type of process to that is your sponsored emails. So it's, it's that message but it's a, it's, it's a leveraged message using um, sponsored emails that you can go out there and send that. And where we've had the most success on that is driving straight to a phone conversation using the LinkedIn lead forms. So do you do that with people you've already connected with or is that brand new people who maybe didn't hit the, who didn't hit the accept button or like where does that strategy sort so, of So, so yeah, yeah. So we, we set up a similar type of search. So it's sort of, you know, like your cross-channel marketing it's sort of cross-channel marketing, but within the same platform. 
um, because some people won't respond to your message that you've personally sent, but all of a sudden when they see that sponsored message that lands in their inbox, they respond to it differently. So yeah, it's it, don't ask me why, but, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's it's crazy. So so literally, I've we've used sponsored emails where we just you know we might send to our key industries, company sizes, um, seniority levels, and all of that. Say like exactly the same message sometimes as what we send during our just our outbound sequence, but they respond to the sponsored email over the normal outbound one, which is which is weird. And it's so weird. And what's the response time on these? Like, I know I get a LinkedIn message, it'll hit my inbox and then yep. it'll like sit there and then I'll be like, oh yeah, I'm going to respond to that person and like yeah. three days later. Yeah, everyone's different. Like everyone's really different. It's funny. This is crack, cracks me up. So I had a phone call last week with a recruitment company in Melbourne here in Australia. Um, I went and checked out their profile before our call. I sent them the message with my calendar link back in October of 2017. That's how he came on to have a phone call with me. They just responded. Just responded. And I'm like, I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Like two years almost. And he goes, sorry, man. Or, you know, it just hasn't been a priority. And then, he, but this is true. He goes, I, I, like, I just made a note that if I do go and do LinkedIn stuff again, I wanted to talk to you. Um, because I, I see your videos and your updates and you seem to actually be helpful. So I went, oh, I'm going to get in contact with this guy um, now. And, and he went to message me and he goes, oh, there's the message from two years ago. That was the last time that we had actually messaged him through the process two years ago and he booked in for a call. And that's such an important point though, right? Like you can't just go in and start connecting and messaging people. And you did mention this, that you really need to make sure that your profile's are yep. set up step number one and the yep. salesperson's profile as well as the company's yeah right you need those two hundred percent this is, this is all when, our employees yeah 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 hundred percent so you know how like you guys do a lot with seo and adwords and all of that mm-hmm. the fact is is like linkedin's still one of the largest search and en- engines out there it's like in the top 10 but when you incorporate google and linkedin together like just go and do a search for anybody or anything LinkedIn's often, often than not LinkedIn's up there so imagine if you've got from an SEO perspective even if it's just all of your frontline team imagine if all of the experience section with their employment is 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 written in a way that everybody's got the clear branded message in the experience section and all of their uh, their about us pro- processes is tailored in a way that it really highlights them as an individual and their expertise, but then transitions into the business or the brand that you've got there. And then the headlines are clearly structured. Um, This is like, honestly, this is where so many larger companies are just completely missing the mark because they go, oh, we don't want to enforce, you know, social media, but you have the social media policies of what your team can can and can't say. Yeah. But just take it that little step further and go, hey, when you're employed with us, we have we use LinkedIn as a company. You're in a role that, um, you know, you're in a client-facing role, so we need you to in, input this information on your LinkedIn profile. I'd probably go and, you know, if you're not willing to do that, well, you're probably not going to get the job here. So, um, Well, that makes perfect sense for your company for yeah. sure. And even yeah. for us, I actually kind of want to turn to my team and be like, hey, guys, SEO, yeah. let's make a ton of sense. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because so, they're just going to get more and more results, you know, which is yeah. going to be what we want. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And so profile, everybody's profile, company's profile. And what you just said right before we talked about profiles was that you're so active. So because you're on LinkedIn, because you're sharing constantly, uh, because you have new content out on a regular basis, I, w- I watch your videos. That's Thank why you. I remember to call you to say, hey, I'm doing a podcast. John would be perfect yeah. because I've been watching your videos. And so there has to be that piece of it right it's kind of threefold your profiles have to be updated you have to be active and engaged on LinkedIn and yep. then you can add in this third layer which is the actual messaging and outreach and then yeah. cool reminders because like, you're active and then oh they're going to look at your profile and they all yeah. work together and you get you got to ask you know you've got to ask for what you want <laughs> that's, yeah, that's sure. the, the reason the reason why most people are terrible at sales is because they never ask someone if they want to buy you know so, <laughs> so we're just gonna so we're gonna do it in a way that's um, respectful 
and profitable. And I like maybe's always kill the sales conversation. The confused mind says no. So I'm if someone says no to me, spectacular. That's as equally as amazing as somebody who says yes. Because yeah. I'm not then going to invest time following you up because I know you're never going to buy. You know, I can move on. Yeah, move here. on. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I got other places to be. No, that I think they're going to come off next month. You know, I'm really confident. You said that for the last six months. <laughs> Move, <out. laughs> Move along. Move on. <laughs> Which actually brings us into the, um, so the media side of this is obviously LinkedIn being being the main channel. Maybe some face, we can talk a little bit about Facebook, but really I want to move into, because you segment so nicely for me, into the <laughs> analytics piece of this, which, you know, how do you even know this thing is working? You said you manually in Excel sheets sort of track where you are. How do you know this is working? What do you Yeah. Well, so we correlate it from a couple of different numbers and a couple of different metrics. So, you know, for example, if someone's engaging us um, as the company that does the outreach, obviously they pay us a monthly fee. Um, so what we can do from a monthly basis is go, all right, well, how many connections were sent and how many were accepted? So naturally we go, great, well, there's a cost of connection. Um, so typically that's going to be somewhere between $2.80 and $16 is, you know, and it ranges anywhere in between that depending on how, you know, challenging the, that market segment is. So that's what we look at um, from that aspect. Uh, then, we, then we look at cost of engagement. So somebody who responds to a message and then cost of conversation. So when someone books an appointment. Um, so they're, the, they're sort of the three metrics that we look at from a specific LinkedIn campaign. Um, similar to like if you're doing a paid ad, ad campaign, you know, what's the cost per click or cost of impression, cost per click, cost per lead. Um, from that aspect. So that's that's the way that we can track it. Our team will will sit there and just run the processes and the numbers through that. That's that's what we do there. Um, we're, we're, to give you some benchmarks, we always look and aim across our client base. We're looking for an average minimum of about a 30% acceptance rate. Um, now, don't get me wrong, we've got clients that are tracking at 86% acceptance rate and we've got clients that sit at about 16%. Um, and the ones that are the red flags are the ones that sit at about 16, and then it's a matter of going, okay, well, is the market that we're trying to um, target on LinkedIn, are they not as active, or is it the messaging script that we're using is, is not that great, or potentially, and what we find some of the times as well, is that instead of sending the connection from maybe the salesperson, we might actually transition to sending the connection request from the CEO or a VP or something like that of the business because business people, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to deal with the salesperson, so they won't accept. They're just going to try and sell me something. So what we would do is reach out from a higher level, mm-hmm. so peer to peer level, and then introduce the salesperson through the process. Yeah. Uh, so really, it to you, it's an engagement rate is what you're looking at at the end of the day. Yeah, That's yeah. For, like, like to give, yeah. To, I mean, to give you an idea of, um, like, a, a, of some rough ideas of numbers. So, so, we would see on average the cost of connection would be around about eight dollars. But we've got as low as like three bucks type thing, and as high as sixteen. But about eight dollars seems to be the average. Um, then cost of engagement will typically be somewhere between sort of thirty and fifty dollars. Um, so someone's like giving us a thumbs up or they've you know commented or whatever it might be. And then typically cost of conversation, so like a phone call or whatever it might be, typically anywhere, and this one, this is where it ranges. Yeah, it ranges. Um, typically be anywhere from like we've had as low as like $80. On average, it's sort of like that $150 to $200 mark seems to be that sweet spot from that aspect, which isn't too bad. And once again, it all depends on, you know, conversion rates, and, you yeah. know, first year's, first year's acquisition cost and then your long-term client value. And, and most importantly, what are you willing to invest to acquire a client? Um, so I know in our business, we'll spend anywhere from sort of $1,500 to $2,000 to acquire a client. What's interesting about this, right, is it's really low. So in terms of actually closing that person, do you find that happens faster using the system opposed to going from like more of a brand strategy all the way down or even like from an, from a, I don't want to yeah. say paid search cause that's pretty low too, but like from a display ad, right. It, even yeah. demand gen. Well, every, I mean, every business in their process is different because we're using more direct response marketing. We would expect that it would close quicker. Um, so like in our business, we run a 90 day sales cycle from like a qualified lead coming through. And we know for a fact that the majority of the people, if they're going to buy, the bulk of them are going to buy within the first 30 days. And then it sort of tapers off from there. What, what we know for a fact is if somebody, if we've spoken to somebody and they don't buy 
by 90 days, the likelihood of them buying in the next 12 months is less than 5%. So we don't even speak to them anymore. We just move them, put them in long-term nurture. If they re-engage in the sequence and book in a call, that's fine, but we're not going to invest any follow-up calls or anything like that with them. Um, but the bulk of what we see is, you know, like in our business, it's, it's uh, you know, are you interested? Do you have the budget? Are you committed to doing something? Here's our price point. Are we doing it or not? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's like, it's, it's that. And, and you know, where, yeah, where, where it takes a little bit longer might be, oh, okay, you know, usually I've got to get, I've got to go and present it to the board or whatever it might be um, from that aspect. But as you know, you try and get everybody and all decision makers on a call at once if you, you know, so as humanly possible Ideally. as you can. Yeah. Oh, John, this has been so awesome. I feel like I could just sit here and chat to you all day about LinkedIn. Who knew? Oh, this stuff. It would be so it's exciting. Great. So exciting. <laughs> it's, and I don't mean that sarcastically. It, it really is just this endless world of the right people. And yeah. to use it in so many different ways, not just from lead generation, but just from connecting. It was so great to yeah. meet you a year ago and connect on LinkedIn. And then here we are. Like, here we are. Yeah. Here we are. Thank you, LinkedIn. Thank you. Yes. John, thank you so much. I really appreciate thank it. Very much. Thanks, Kerry. I really appreciate it. Thanks, everybody, for listening in. I hope you got some value out of it. Definitely. All right, we'll be in touch. Thank you. So that was John Bellamy from Direct Messaging. Mike, in listening to this, your wheels got spinning. They did. You probably heard a few of my hypotheses. I had a pair of them in the intro. Uh, around having the right content to, to back up uh, an organic play on, on LinkedIn, uh, as well as uh, having a good frequency. So it's the right content at the right frequency. What I also hadn't thought about until I listened to this podcast was, is it the right person or the right mouthpiece that this content is coming from at this certain frequency? So when I referenced the fact that we had worked with a, a pair of really smart companies earlier this year that unfortunately it didn't lead to a lot of engagements or a lot of uh, business development activity on the whole that was all with with my linkedin profile that was that was the mouthpiece that was uh, sharing this information and making the connection so what i thought is I had, now i have a third hypothesis which is great for one podcast to come with three hypotheses now what i thought of was you know hey carrie you're running this podcast you've got whole season, you know, in the can, ready to be released on a weekly basis for, you know, months to come, months to follow. Frankly, I think somebody like you who is producing a lot of content on a really steady rhythm would, would be a much better mouthpiece because as John talked about engagement, having that content being able to share it and it be your content, I think is really powerful. And so that's, that's my third hypothesis is, you know what, I, I think that it shouldn't have been me the whole time. It should have been you or somebody else on our team that was a content producer who could stir up some of these relationships and get engagements going at a higher success rate. You know, and by success rate, I mean number of messages that go out versus those that are responded to, those that are responded to positively, and even better, those that are responded to with a next step. Like, hey, Karen, so glad you reached out and you shared this podcast. This is a common interest that we share. Like, I would love to talk to you about it. It has nothing to do with buying or selling something to you. It's just, hey, we've got a common interest here. Like, I think we should talk. And that's really what I heard John talk about when he said the word engagement is just starting conversations that there's mutual interest on both sides. Uh, and that, that's what I really took away from this conversation. Yeah, the planet sort of aligned for me too in talking about this and hashing it out with you of not only am I more engaged on LinkedIn through podcasting, I also did a ton of articles last year on LinkedIn as well uh, from a leadership standpoint, but also one of our, one of our employees, Christina Kay has taken over our social networks, all of them from an organic standpoint and has been blowing it up. I mean, I think our LinkedIn engagement alone has doubled since she took it over pretty flatlined for a long time because uh, we were doing nothing with it. And so having that engagement come from her of consistency, of sharing not only our podcast, but any content we have on our blog, as well as just like fun office fodder. Uh, we just posted a picture of one of our employees with a, a kitten on her shoulder because the warehouse has 
a allowance of pets and it's like the cutest picture ever. She's got an MTG hoodie on. So there's some branding and then there's this cute little kitty and, and it gets a ton of, even on LinkedIn, gets a ton of likes and hearts for showing our culture here at MTG. And so by having all of these things sort of play together now and now starting to engage potentially not, not necessarily new customers, but just people who might share similar interests to us and who we are using direct messaging and LinkedIn could really have this powerful next step for us. Yeah. And that's why, you know, you and I talked a little bit about it and, and we might be interested in, in bringing direct messaging onto, uh, on board with us and, and to help us build those relationships and drive engagement um, so that we do spin up that organic community of people who follow us and care what's going on, have comments and thoughts. And it might not always be positive comments or thoughts, but we're, we're really talking about just engaging with mm-hmm. folks on LinkedIn um, and having conversations. And that's really all you can ask for is that conversations lead to something, right? Leads to a friendship, whether it's uh, personal or professional, leads to maybe doing business together, leads to um, having an outlet. You know, if somebody needs uh, an agency that does what we do, they now they might have never worked with us, but they know that we exist and they might refer us on to somebody. And, and that's just one conversation becomes two and two becomes four. And it's, it's uh, an ever growing network of, of engagements and conversations that, that end up being really good for us. And I, authentic relationships are really what matter these days. I mean, based off of the podcast I've been doing with John, I have one launching in a few weeks with this gal, Aaron. I mean, really from what I'm hearing, everybody say consistently is you have to be real and authentic to do any of this outreach from having a podcast to LinkedIn messaging to even now emails. It has to come from a real place. It has to be about building relationships and it has to be about caring. And in order to do all of that, you have to make sure you have your building blocks in place as well. So thank you, Mike, for joining me. This has been awesome. And thank you, John Bellamy for coming on our podcast. It was great to talk to him. If you'd like to learn more about John and direct messaging, you can find them on LinkedIn. What better place than, than to do so? Thank you again for listening to the MKD podcast, where we help demand gen marketers grow their company's businesses through the right means, messaging, media, and measurement. See you next time. <laughs>